All right, so we're going to talk about the support in Windows for C++ AMP in particular. Much of the support for C++ AMP you can deduce from Windows support for direct compute because C++ AMP is mostly a C++ template library built on top of the direct compute API. Now direct compute was an added feature of DirectX 11 and was eventually backported to DX10 as well. But that means that any version of Windows that supports DX11 or later will be able to support C++ AMP. Now the reference Direct3D implementation on the CPU is guaranteed to always be available on Windows systems. So any support in DirectX 10 or DirectX 11, the reference implementation on the CPU will be available. What that means for you as an application developer is that your C++ AMP application will always be valid as long as you can specify what versions of Windows your application is compatible with. You don't need to worry about uh, whether the target platform has a specific kind of GPU or a specific driver installed. Uh, just by running on a Windows platform, your C++ AMP application should always be valid. However, you also have to remember that the reference implementation is pretty slow. So depending on uh, what you care about in terms of performance, along with your portability, you may want to consider either having a tighter restriction so that only Windows platforms with uh, better implementation than just the reference implementation are available. Or you might have to consider testing at runtime whether such a device is available and if not use some fallback implementation written in a standard C++. Windows 8 in particular is the first operating system that always includes the Windows Advanced Rasterization Platform or WARP. WARP was built as essentially a fallback direct 3D implementation that was actually usable in production. Uh, this production quality uh, renderer for DirectX still runs on the CPU, but it's intended to be very efficient and relatively high performance. There will be some disadvantages to using warp compared to a higher power accelerator, especially for rendering and for graphics. There will be things that warp will uh, be able to do less well than a graphics card would. But for C++ AMP in particular, the warp implementation on Windows 8 means that your kernel, if it will not run on a GPU, actually has a fairly good way of fully utilizing the CPU hardware resources on the system as well. Now let's go ahead and transition into a demo and see how these different uh, implementations are accessible and what they look like in terms of performance. Okay, so let's take a look at the different kinds of accelerators that might be available. Now in general, if you want the full list of accelerators, you can use the accelerator get all function. On this machine, there are basically only three accelerators that we really care about or uh, need to worry about. The first one is the GPU itself, which if you take the default accelerator on this system is what you will get. And so if we build this, and run it, you can see it's taking about a tenth of a second or so to do the blend operation in this example. Now, the two other accelerators available on this system, first, there is the Direct3D Reference Accelerator, which will always be available no matter what system you run on. And so if you build and run there, we'll go ahead and fast forward through this for your benefit. And now you can see why we fast forwarded, because that was about 30 seconds of just sitting here and doing nothing. So here you can see that obviously there is about two orders of magnitude 
removed from the reference implementation and the GPU accelerated version that we just ran. So functionally it's portable, but realistically the reference implementation is primarily there for debugging, not for a realistic fallback if the GPU is not available. Uh, which is why if you only request the default accelerator on the system, even if the GPU is not available, it will not say that the reference implementation is a potential default accelerator uh, because it's probably, unless your application is well aware of what the reference implementation is and what its performance characteristics are, uh, you're better off not being accidentally forced into using it. Now the other implementation that is available on this system because we are on a Windows 8 platform is the Direct3D Warp implementation and yes that is correct. So the Direct3D Warp implementation is not meant for debugging, it's meant to actually be a viable uh, implementation of the Direct3D Accelerator API just fully utilizing the CPU as much as possible. And if we rebuild this and rerun it, you can see that that is much nicer. This is only about a factor of two off of the uh, GPU's performance on this system, which tells you a couple of things. One, the task that we're executing here might not quite be big enough for the GPU to show off its uh, probable about 5x uh, raw performance improvement over the possibility of the CPU, but it also shows you just how good and well optimized this warp implementation really is. So on a Windows 8 system, if all else fails, the warp implementation is a perfectly viable uh, implementation of your C++ AMP kernels, and it is probably going to be about as good as native C++ code, especially considering that you get good utilization of the CPU vector units and the multiple cores on your CPU if you use this. Now you're not even limited to just using one accelerator within your particular program. Uh, it's entirely possible to split up the work that you need done over multiple accelerators, for instance. So in this case, maybe we use the uh, default accelerator initially, but let's say that we want to do another level of operation and hoist this out of the way. Let's say for some reason in this particular blend operation we had two different versions of blending that we wanted to do in order to store two different results. Uh, we won't actually store two different results, but we'll go ahead and do two different parallel for each kernels. To show that and let's say this does the opposite blending, where instead of taking positive as positive, we invert the mask. Now, if that's the situation, we've got two parallel four eaches, and they don't have to use the same view at all. So, for instance, here we have an accelerator and a view that's using the default accelerator, but we can also create another accelerator and another view that is the CPU accelerator and the CPU view and for this one let's use the direct 3D warp implementation. So now we have two accelerators with two views and we'll have two parallel for each kernels and this one will be executed on the accelerator, this one will execute on the CPU warp accelerator. And then we have to wait for both of them to complete and if we build this and run it, 
you can see that the blend time, we're doing twice as much work, but it's not taking twice as long as it was on the CPU. There is a little bit of serialization, at least the way I've written it here, because this view and this view are actually the same view, so this is implicitly moving data to the GPU, doing some updates on it, then moving it to the CPU and doing some further updates on it. So these parallel for each's are serialized, so we're not seeing the benefit of them being overlapped in this particular example. Uh, but you certainly could imagine that. And just to play with it, let's say that we're going to do two independent blends. We're going to do one on the mask only and one on the image only. So the GPU is only accessing the mask, the CPU is only accessing the accelerator, and if we build and run that, you should see that it takes much less time overall. It takes about the same time as the longest of the two operations, which is, remember that the CPU doing its operation before was about 200 milliseconds, and it's about that same amount now, because this work being done on the GPU is happening at the same time as this work being done on the accelerator. So for that time, while both of these kernels are running, we're actually taking full utilization of the system. This uh, kernel using the CPU view on the direct 3D warp implementation is fully utilizing all of the cores on our CPU, and this kernel uh, which is targeting the default accelerator, which happens to be the GPU, is fully utilizing that resource as well. And you could imagine generalizing this not just to CPU and GPU, but being able to dynamically query at runtime all of the accelerators available on your system and assigning work to each of them, making sure that your system is fully utilized. But these are the accelerators that you uh, should expect to see on a Windows platform. You'll have the default accelerator, which hopefully is the strongest GPU in the system. Otherwise, it'll be this uh, warp implementation. You can also directly access the warp implementation if it's Windows 8. And if all else fails, this code would theoretically still be functional if we only had the uh, reference implementation accelerator to work with.